the brain stem the brain stem consists of three parts from above downwards we have midbrain pons and medulla this brain stem what we are seeing is the anterior aspect of the brain stem and this is the posterior aspect of the brain brain stem the posterior aspect of the brain stem we can see the floor of the fourth ventricle here you can see the floor of the fourth ventricle here it contain many important centers such as for the maintenance of respiration heart rate etc and from the brain stem we have the uh, the brain stem the brain stem contains the cranial nerve nucleus from third to twelfth cranial nerve so to third to twelfth cranial nerve nucleus is located in the brain stem now we'll see the connection this brain stem this midbrain is connected to the cerebrum by means of crest cerebrae you can see the section so midbrain is connected to the cerebrum by means of this connecting stalk called the crest cerebrae next this midbrain is connected to the cerebellum by means of the superior cerebellar peduncle you can see this is actually the superior cerebellar peduncle this is actually the superior cerebellar peduncle you can see the end of the superior cerebellar peduncle here is connecting the midbrain to that of the cerebellum now the pons is connected to the cerebellum by means of the middle cerebellar peduncle this is the middle cerebellar peduncle cut part of the middle cerebellar peduncle pons is connected to the cerebellum by middle cerebellum then the medulla is connected to the cerebellum by this peduncle you can see this follow this you can see it here there is the inferior cerebellar peduncle so we have superior cerebellar peduncle the inferior cerebellar peduncle and this is the middle cerebellar peduncle now we'll study about the medulla this medulla is divided into two equal halves by this sulcus so this is a fissure or this fissure is called anteromedian fissure anterior anteromedian fissure and posteriorly it is divided by means of posteromedian sulcus so this is called the posteromedian sulcus so you can see the posteromedian sulcus here here it is covered by pia pia is covering it and this is the anteromedian fissure is separating the medulla into two equal halves this anteromedian fissure ends at the upper part as a small foramen called the foramen cecum this is called the foramen cecum now on either side of this fissure we have two prominences you can see the two prominences the medial prominence is called the pyramids and the lateral this bulged portion is called the olive these two prominences are called the pyramids and these two are called the olives now if you go downwards this fissure is obliterated at the lower part of the medulla by a decussation that is the medullary decussation which you can't see clearly but you have you can see some fibers crossing here exactly here so these fibers will form the pyramidal tract crossing fibers crossing fibers of the pyramidal tract this is the medullary decussation coming posteriorly the posteromedian sulcus is prominent only at the lower part and the upper part is actually open here which will form the lower part of the fourth ventricle and the central canal is present only at the lower part of the medulla you can see the canal which is coming from the draining the fourth ventricle is going like this and it will be continuous with that of the central canal of the spinal cord so lower part has got central canal thus the medulla contains lower closed part and an upper upper open part so this upper open part and this is the lower closed part now coming to the anterior sulcus on each half we have two more sulcus one is the anterolateral sulcus which will be between the pyramid and the olive this is the anterolateral sulcus and this anterolateral sulcus gives origin for the hypoglossal nerve the hypoglossal nerve rootlets will be starting from here and this is the posterolateral sulcus which will be present between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle here and this is the olive this is the posterolateral sulcus in this posterolateral sulcus we have the starting of 
the glossopharyngeal vagus and the accessory nerve glossopharyngeal vagus and the accessory nerve so totally four cranial nerves emerge from this area of the medulla coming to the posterior closed part of the medulla we have three prominent areas in relation to the posterior sulcus you can see the three prominent area medially we have the gracile tubercle laterally we have the cuneate tubercle followed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle so this medial elevated portion is called the gracile tubercle then comes the cuneate tubercle followed by the inferior cerebellar peduncle the next is the open part of the medulla this open part of the medulla forms the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle and it has so many important features and this lower part of the medulla uh, it will be the sorry this uh, floor of the fourth ventricle will be dealt in detail in the next video next we'll see about the pons pons again it has got a anterior surface and a posterior surface the posterior surface will form the upper part of the floor of the fourth ventricle will form the upper part of the floor of the fourth ventricle the anterior surface lodges a groove in the midline called the basilar sulcus which will be lodging the basilar artery and we can see many transverse striations transverse fibers running on either side of the pons and these fibers will be ending in the middle cerebellar peduncle you can see it's a middle cerebellar peduncle before it ends as middle cerebellar peduncle we can see the junction between the pons and the middle cerebellar peduncle we can see the cranial nerve which will be emerging from there which is actually the trigeminal nerve the trigeminal nerve will be emerging at this place you can see the cut part of the trigeminal nerve here next we'll see the midbrain you can see the pons is attached to the midbrain by means of this crest cerebrae this is actually the crest cerebrae inferiorly at the ponto medullary junction we can see the emergence of 6th 7th and 8th cranial nerve so the 5th 6th 7th and 8th cranial nerves are emerging from the pons 5th cranial nerve we saw here cut part and at the ponto medullary junction from medial to lateral we have 6th 7th and 8th cranial nerve emerging next we'll study about the midbrain so midbrain on the anterior aspect we have the two crest cerebrae two crest cerebrae which will form the lateral boundary of this fossa called the interpeduncular fossa this fossa is called interpeduncular fossa from the medial side of the crest cerebrae we can see the emergence of the oculomotor nerve this is the oculomotor nerve from the medial side of the crest cerebrae we can see the emergence of oculomotor nerve and this is the optic tract will form the boundary here this is the optic tract this is the optic chiasma so in the interpeduncular fossa behind the optic chiasma we can see the infundibulum this is the infundibulum infundibulum followed by these two projections called the mammillary body these two projections are called the mammillary body so be below so below the mammillary body this area of the interpeduncular fossa is sieve like it will have many small openings and that is called the posterior perforated substance that is called the posterior perforated substance if we see the posterior part of the midbrain we can see this pair of two pairs of bulged regions one, one pair on the superior aspect one pair on the inferior aspect this is called the superior colliculus and these two are called the inferior colliculus so if you trace it posteriorly we can see the branchium of the superior and the inferior colliculus and we can see this is the medial geniculate body so medial geniculate body this is the lateral geniculate body so we can see the medial and the lateral geniculate body lateral geniculate body as we know it is concerned with division medial geniculate body is concerned with here so we can see the superior colliculus inferior colliculus the branchium and we can see the medial geniculate body and the lateral geniculate body the branchium which is connecting the superior geniculate body will be connecting to the lateral uh, superior colliculus will be connecting to the lateral geniculate body and the branchium which is connecting the inferior colliculus will be connecting it to the medial geniculate body so medial geniculate body and lateral geniculate body now inferior to the colliculus we can see 
the trochlear nerve emerging superiorly superiorly here we will have the pineal gland here we will have the pineal gland so these are the features of the brain stem and the interpeduncular fossa in next video we will study about the floor of the fourth ventricle thank you